So, uh, Hector Hilkegon has joined us. Hector, good morning to you. How are you doing? Roger, how's it going? You're just back from the States. Hector USA is going to air in two months, three months' time. Yeah, it's on car? from October to Christmas. We just spent 12 weeks driving through the south. 12 weeks? Deep into the south, off the interstate, round the bend, and into a different part of America. It could have been a million miles from Central Park or uh, California. It was an incredible journey to um, rural Georgia, rural Alabama. Rural Mississippi. I stopped off with Buddy in Last Chance You in Scuba, right. Mississippi. That big show on Netflix. Did you ever see that show? Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable to be sitting there with Buddy in the stand, watching his team perform. We got has access he, all he areas. Toned down his language a bit. Yeah, but he's incredible. He's an incredibly passionate man. He doesn't care about losing. He just cares about winning. And it was just brilliant to be on the set of Last Chance You, even though Last Chance You has moved on to yeah. another team. Uh, I spent the day with Carl Lewis in the University of Houston, uh, sitting with him, watching his university track team. Uh, with Leroy Burrell, who's right. another great sprinter, there in charge of the multi-million pound athletics. But that's he's his, only that's his day job now, is it? That's his day job. Oh, but right. I sat with Carl Lewis, 55 years of age. He looked like he... He said... Like he did in 1984 when he romped the victory with a long jump as well. But uh, incredible journey, yeah, 12 weeks traveling through the States. I've had enough of them now because the Americans, pound for pound, are boring. Well, it's a Trump country <laughs> you're in. I've, I've had enough of them. They all look the, they all feel the same, talk the same. We had to dig very deep to get some difference, but they're all Trump lovers. Trump is absolutely revered. No matter what we see on the 9 o'clock news in Ireland, nothing, it doesn't matter. The cities are booming. Phoenix, San Antonio, Houston, Atlanta, booming. Em employment booming. Construction booming. So when America's doing well, they're happy with the man in front. Yeah, you, you were in Mississippi, or <coughs> you in Alabama? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's an interesting part of the world as well. Yeah. There's, uh, they're, they're interesting characters, as you say, pound for pound, boring people. You're absolutely bang on the money. There was one guy I, I had a conversation with, and I'd say it went on for about 10 hours. He was like, here in Alabama, we like to make our barbecue sauce with a ketchup base. Yeah. If you cross the border, they like to make it with a mustard base. And he just went on and on and on, went through all the states in the south and what base they like to use to make their barbecue sauce. And it was the most boring conversation I've ever been involved in, but I learned a lot about barbecue sauce. <laughs> now, I like the Louisianans, because everyone seems to have their pickup truck, which is, we call it the Hilux. Uh, we've only, a co it, we only, it only showed me how, how small our range of trucks and jeeps mm. are in this country they love their pickup trucks they love having their outdoor boat they love having their quad bikes they love having their guns they love fishing they love barbecues but the minute we got to texas it sort of changed a little bit you can fit ireland almost 12 times into texas we were driving for six and seven hours between stories uh, and then when we got into the cross the border at el paso in ciudad juarez right down in that little corner everything changed we got into new mexico it was the desert, big cactuses, Breaking Bad, yeah. Albuquerque, Santa Fe, hippies, marijuana. Really? <laughs> hippies? Desert. Where? Where are the hippies? There are hippies. If you want to go off the grid in America, I suppose Offaly used to be off the grid, but it's not <laughs> anymore because of the Claret Jug. And can I just say, the Claret Jug is on the greatest tour of any trophy in world sport. I mean, that is, a, that is an Instagram page waiting to happen, isn't it? He's in nightclubs. He's in, he's in stadiums. It's rock and roll. He's in GA halls. He's got women kissing him. That Claret Jug is becoming the greatest trophy in world sport. But uh, uh, off the grid in Arizona, New Mexico, it's just incredible. People who have made money and want to get away, people who have no money and want to get away, people who have done some bad things and, uh, and want to get away, New Mexico and Arizona, there is space for everybody. Right, okay, that's interesting. Great, great part of the world, really liked it there, and then into Southern California. So yeah, that's on, uh, that's on TG Car. That sounds great, I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. Um, I want to read out one of your tweets on the weekend. Appalling refereeing decisions today all over the pitch. Goals scored, goals disallowed, no advantage played. It's a disgrace at this level, so unfair to both teams. I felt that referee needed to have a bloody, uh, a nice bat, didn't he? I just felt he was mitered, mitered in the heat of the moment. And what Hurland has given us in the last 10 years gives us exactly what we want. Unbelievable skill, passion and speed and drama and epic games. These epic games are not being refereed right. The calls are not being made right. And it's just we are uh, not able to keep up with the ferocity of what's happening. And I'm, the referee is a hard job. I know you spoke about it earlier on. Should there be two referees? Should there be one on each half? It's just getting the wrong decisions at the, these big games. But it's just, it's just not right. The technology hasn't, hasn't... You know, as you were, you were saying about the trajectory of the ball going over the crossbar, 
How good is it for a mountain of a goalkeeper to rise majestically like a Cullen to stop that ball going over the bar? Where's that rewarded? Why isn't that rewarded? No, we have to stop the game for half a minute and see the trajectory of the ball that goes down into the back of the hill. It's, it's, all, it's not right. With all the money they have, they should sort it out. Now, the referee is a hard job, but those decisions cost, like, was it a goal disallowed for Wexford? Was it 32 seconds after going back to stop another goal? It's just, it's a strange one because I just think hurling delivers. It's delivering in spades. It's delivering brilliant games and they need to be refereed. To the, to the best of uh, quality. Podge, how do you feel about two referees? Um, maybe it'll work. Hurling's a quick game, one in each half. It, it works in the AFL, doesn't it? They have two in the AFL. Yeah, yeah. It works in the AFL, and maybe there's something to look at. I think that these big calls, they happen so quick. They, the whole, um, if we, they could review them, I think it would make a big difference. I think there has to be some review system or someone upstairs. And even if that ball was a point, the game should have gone on. It, it does seem, like, sorry, Sandro, it does seem though that like they aren't getting the best out of the officials that they do have. I agree that they should have two referees, but ultimately they do have one, two, three, four, five, six other officials on the, the field of play as well. And six out of the six of them are largely useless when it comes to actually making calls and on big seventh, decisions. And a seventh who looks after the, the slips for yeah. subs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it's a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, it's eight people yeah. managing a game and not, not managing a property. The umpires can sometimes barely get it, it can figure out if it's a point or not. Let alone, like the umpires are in the perfect position to see that extra player getting suplexed in front of the, that goal yesterday. Absolutely, stonewall penalty without a shadow of a doubt, not given. And I, I mean, it's, it's an All Ireland semi final. And Wexford, I, I, feel, I felt sorry for Wexford. I, I think they're a great bunch of hurlers. Davy has instilled a passion and, and, a, and a pride into them young lads. God, they're, 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 they're men, they were men. And I, I just think, I just think it's uh, at an All Ireland semi final stage. It's just uh, it's it's harsh. And now the other game, Limerick lost the game in the first ten minutes. End of story. You can't let a team like that slip away. And no matter how good you thought you were, Limerick will kick themselves. And Wexford had it there as well. But it was a great weekend. Great weekend of sport. But I was more fascinated by the under twenty matches. By the way, I'm a juvenile coach. I'm training here under sixteen now, and hopefully we'll go for an under sixteen A championship in Gaelic football. But we're talking about the future stars, uh, and we know about Clifford and Sean O'Shea and these boys, but this young full forward for Dublin, Archer from, from St. Moore's or some, some, some club in North County Dublin, he scored another two goals yesterday, or three goals against Leash, and this Carl O'Mahony for Cork under 20s. I don't yeah. TG Carr has been shown these games. This under 20 season is magnificent. There's some serious Cork versus Dublin. I think it's on later on this week in the All Ireland final under 20. I was more, I was more interested in those games than I was the the senior level at this week. What's your uh, philosophy of play as a, as a coach for the under-16s? Uh, two sweepers. I, <laughs> this, sweep, this sweeper system, I have young lads, I have two young lads, touch wood, they're playing well, they're going well, 14 and 15, they're playing with the school, one lad, uh, the older boy just won a Connacht Juvenile A title, took the dynasty away from St. Charlotte's, it's a new school in Clare Galway. They're going well in their Gaelic, I'm coaching them, uh, the Gaelic team for the last seven or eight years, we've won a couple of counties, we've won an All-Ireland Fela Division One trophy, I want the boys to play quick moving football and let that ball quick into the full forward line, just like you're seeing with that, with that Archer man under 20 and Carlo Mahoney. If you give good forwards good ball, quick fall, none of this recycle. You can, if you need to recycle, go back and recycle. But sweeper systems and all this, teams are using that now in juvenile matches. Sweeper system, it should be 15 versus 15 playing good, honest football, but you cannot beat a really good quick ball into good full forwards. Yeah. So, so Conor McManus, I think, said a great line, and it was, in a, it was in a college scene, I think. He just said, I don't care if it's high or low, I just want it quick. <laughs> so and, and lovely ball, you know that lovely ball that bounces and it's, it's onto the chest, or it comes straight in, he turns the hand pass, score. That's the type of football I like to be yeah. see played. And, uh, lads, you should keep an eye on this Cork player, Cahal O'Mahony, as well. Um, Dublin are a fine under-20 team. Porrick Joyce was in charge, charge of the go with team uh, this year that got to the semi-final la la yesterday. But I think the juvenile's coming through. It's very, very exciting. Can, can, I, can I ask on, a quick yeah. question? Just on the ruling. Do you know the way it, it, this is going back now to my gripe with the Clare 21, 21s that lost the Munster final against Tipperary when there was a puck out taken and he stepped outside the square? And then we won a free on the 21, and the ref pulled it back because the umpire had his hand up and said, oh, you're getting a 65, and Pabark scored it. And yesterday, the ball did or didn't go over the bar, and then Tipperary won a free. And so, is there a rule that when the play stops, you can't go back? Because basically, what the people were saying was that 
because the play didn't stop and it continued, the ball didn't go wide or didn't go over, that's why he could go back. But once the whistle was blown for the free, that it had to, that oh. you can't go back. Oh, so that's, uh, that should have been a new... Well, I don't know, because uh, Hawkeye is obviously the all-seeing eye of Sauron, and so therefore more important. I don't know. So you, your point is that after the ball gets poked out, a free is blown, and that's the new start of all play. You can't go back beyond that. Well, maybe you can. I w- I'd love to know the ruling on it, or is there yeah. a ruling on it? Or mm. Because, like, that's, uh, that's what I... D- you I could go back now, and Pat Burke wouldn't really have that free, and you guys can... Well, game. I wasn't playing, but I was a spectator. <laughs> but, <laughs> but even Hawkeye, how old is Hawkeye now? He must be getting old. 2013. Yeah, it should be sure there's a new quicker version of Hawkeye that give us better 3D imaging. You were on about the trajectory of the ball. Yeah. It's not about that. Is it, did the ball cross the, the crest of the crossbar? Yeah. Or did a massive Wexford hand tip. Or tip hand get up there to stop it? Like a, and, and can we not celebrate somebody six foot something going three foot over the bar to try and stop something? We can don't see yeah. enough fielding anymore. Now we stop the play because someone's made a great catch. But compared to Wimbledon, in Wimbledon you can see a piece of grass. Absolutely. Yeah. One piece of grass. Absolutely. Like it's same technology. Exact same technology. Yeah, uh, yeah, but Hawkeye needs to have a little bit of a revamp. Kieran Archer scored 3-8, 1-8, 3-8 and 2-5. Oh, listen. Yeah. An average of 14 points per attempt which game A so lovely far. full forward and we have to celebrate good centre forwards, good full forwards, good centre backs. You know, the days of Shawnee McMahon. Nobody talks about the, the great centre. You know, that's, I'm married to a Clare woman by the way. <laughs> and I, hey, the golf, were you down at the golf? Uh, in, the hinge, yeah. in the Hinch? Yeah. Unbelievable. Were you down at the golf in the Hinch? Uh, no, I was only the big one. <laughs> What a great week for Claire, man. I was down there uh, for two nights. You did a great job. Yeah, even Davey Fitz opened the bar for two nights down there. <laughs> 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 I think it's still open. <laughs> but anyway, no, it was, a great, it was a great spectacle. Kilkenny versus Tipperary in the All-Ireland final. If you said it a couple of weeks ago, I know, you've people been think they're bonkers. Yeah. It, I, I'm a little bit disappointed that it's Kilkenny and Tip. I'm delighted for both of them individually. I'm delighted for Liam Sheedy. I'm delighted for Cody. They both obviously deserve it. But it would have been amazing to see Wexford in an all Ireland final. It just would have been like exactly what the sport needed. But anyway, and, and I don't want the Tipperary people to be complaining about that because, look, you know, it's not like you haven't won it recently anyway. Is Davey going to go back, do you think? What, what's your instinct? Um, I think he will, just judging by the feel of the players and him this year. I think they've obviously a great relationship, and I'd see him, I'd see him going back and giving another crack. And it looked like there were progression there. I know. Oh, absolutely. Like the like team got better as opposed to fluking its way. They were unbeaten until that point yesterday. Yeah. No. I thought it was three draws. Yeah. Yeah. But they were unbeaten. And um, so yeah, it was. A, listen, it was a good year for them and progress definitely. So they'll be uh, looking to probably build on that next year. And I think that. Um, Holding on to Dave would be massive because he brings his own structure and his own type of play and but a new manager would completely nearly start again. We keep getting told that he has a three-year lifespan and now this will be everybody's going to have to blow that narrative up if he stays. Yeah, well, if Wexford do well next year and if he stays, then people will have to blow that narrative up. But Did you believe that narrative when you were hearing it? Um, <sighs> not really. Like He's had a lot of success and a lot of people talk and probably haven't had the same success. So... I like to listen to the likes of like Brian Cody and these people talking that have had like massive success yeah. and you'd rarely see them kind of making snide remarks or smart comments. So it's kind of like if you, when you're successful as a manager, it's a, it's a hard job. Being a manager of an intercom team is a hard job. You look at John Kiley, like the last 18 months for them, they've won All-Ireland, they've won a Munster, they've won National League and they're just going to be devastated today. Yeah. They're going to be absolutely devastated. He's going to be devastated and that's just the jo- joys of being a manager of an intercounty team, it's not an easy job. And then everyone in the county is on your back. Mm. So um, you got Especially in, I'd imagine, in Clare, like he's written about that extensively, Davey, about how people were on his back. This is probably a little bit easier for him being an outsider. I kind of felt that in Clare, he's one of our own, we can say whatever we want about him. Mm. Yeah, I'd like, uh, being honest about it, I didn't read a whole pile of papers, but I don't read a whole pile of papers when I'm playing, especially when it comes to Clare, when I'm involved. So... I don't like listen to a lot of what's go- the noise around it, but some people do, and some people like feed it back to people, which I don't think is right either. I think when you're playing and you're immersed in it, you're just gonna have to stick to your own philosophy, do what you're doing, and um, listen, get the best out of yourself. And as a manager, that's what he wants to do. And he I obviously has that X factor. He's a, he's an incredible. He he brings more than just he has a, the persona, but he instills something. It doesn't matter if it's Fitzgibbon or whatever club. He has something that he can give those lads to believe, doesn't he? He has that. Uh, Sean Boylan, you know, he has something. When you meet Sean Boylan, and, uh, you know, there's an aura of these guys. There's this positivity that you buy into, and Davey has it in spades with any team he works with, doesn't he? Yeah. Because he's made men out of them Wexford boys. 
Yeah, they'll, no. they'll be there. They'll be there a bit, but it's for the next couple of years. They'll really be kicking themselves this morning. But absolutely, a yeah. great year from. Yeah, I really hope he does, Dave, because it feels like they're reaching a new level of proficiency in the style, the confidence that comes from being Leinster champions next year should should help them kick on. Um, what is the Galway races like, Hector? What does it mean to you? Yeah, there's a great excitement around every parish in the county, and. Uh, I'm just so happy that it's dry. 37 millimetres fell last Sunday. I was dropping my kids out to Connemara. <laughs> Even though they can speak Irish, I'm getting them away from the Xbox for three weeks from Fortnite and their mobiles, which is a detox. Years ago, you go to the Gaeltuk to learn Irish. Now you're going to the Gaeltuk to detox on screens as teenagers. But we were driving out. The windscreens were on full whack. 36 mils or something fell. Clark of the course was on, on last month. But it's dried up brilliantly. The Galway race is... Uh, is unique, it's an event, it's more than just the racing and uh, it's madness, it's, it's a little bit of Las Vegas and comes to town for, for seven days and seven nights and the shenanigans in these hotels and shenanigans in the pubs and everywhere, everyone buys into it, it's a great week. Uh, it's exciting now because we're only a couple of hours from the first race and Willie Mullins and Jessica Harrington have the two co-favourites, who's going to get off to a great start, so it's a great week, you have men down from the mountains and Lads coming in on helicopters, not as many as before, but... Well, John's got... John was in a helicopter with a few Fianna Fallers there in 2003. I what used to see John. We used story. to meet... I met Hank We used to year. meet way back in the day we'd be invited to all these sh shenanigan tents. <laughs> Your best bet ever. What was that? Jaguar Claw. Jaguar Claw, so, John. Okay. Tem tell me it again, because this is classic. <laughs> um, I think it was it uh, Ruby was doing 10 stone 2 or something? Or Davy, Ruby or Davy, I can't remember which. I think it was Ruby was doing 10 stone two, and Davy said it in the paper, Jaguar Claw 14 to 1. And I said it to Hector at the table, and I won. And every time I saw Hector for the next six or seven years, <laughs> just he, had the, he had a print of the docket. The only thing I would just say is Jaguar, Jaguar Claw. Claw. And, and then it. I'd just walk off. <laughs> that's so, all you had to say, because yeah. I knew. So look, you know. It, it when a jockey does 10 stone two, he's only had a cup of tea for two days. Yeah. Uh, so. but, but that's what it's about. It's about those Michael Winters rebel fits. It's about these, yeah. you know, Val O'Brien, a great uh, trainer here in the West of Ireland over the years had a horse called Half Barrel or, and he'd, he'd, he'd win on a Monday and then come out and win on a Saturday I it's, it's just a, you, and, and the small trainers around here will always have a horse lined up no matter how big a festival it is and I was lucky enough I had a couple of winner here I had a good horse called Steve Koppel and I called him after the great <laughs> Manchester United winger but I called him Koppel C-A-P-A-L-L -L, Steve Horse <laughs> and I owned him with a couple of publicans here the boys who owned the Blue Note and Massimo's Ke uh, Kevin Healy and Simon, uh, Simon Heaslip, so very lucky guys, but nice horse, and he won in Galway. He won a, a three-mile hurdle on the Thursday, and to lead him in was fantastic. Uh, Steve Koppel. What price was he? He was 14. Blackstairs Mountain won the race straight afterwards. We'd him doubled up. We couldn't fit the money in our pockets. <laughs> <laughs> we had to get satchels, <laughs> not bags, satchels. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right. Wads, wads. That's what go is all about. Wads, yeah. highs and lows, and <laughs> yeah. the betting ring is incredible as well. You know, it's an incredible cas uh, casino like uh, thrown, uh, like gladiators thrown. There's, there's fifty to sixty bookmakers there, isn't there? More seventy. Yeah, I, I haven't I mean, been here a long time now. Like when you stand yeah. in the middle of that betting ring, it's just. It's like this, whoa, whoa, whoa. There is something, there is something better about, like I know the toad is great for value at times and you might be sitting up at your table and you take the docket from the person, but there's something ah, better about sniffing around for a price, <laughs> trying to get tens when there's nine across the yeah, board. Yeah, looking for 12, give me a bit of 12. Yeah, yeah, and just like, and you spot something and then you maybe, you think, okay, well, I've spotted something and then you actually might be a bit more than you should. Uh, that's, 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 that's yeah, but it's when a guy is standing at a pitch, John, and he's in the old, and he's there, and he's got a lad in behind on the screens with the technology, and he's there, vulnerable, standing there with the suit, and he's taking the price, and you might know something, and you're looking for that 16s, and you get it, and you sort of say, I'd love to be back to take money off you in a few minutes. <laughs> and then I love that feeling of going back and saying, <laughs> it's an even better feeling in Cheltenham when there's a big queue of people like Dunguib or something like that. But when, yeah, yeah. In, when the queue forms after it, and Unlucky for them. Yeah. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. It's great. More often than that, though. No, yeah, but listen. They pay for us all there, so. Yeah, but you, you know, it <laughs> took me 15 years of going to Cheltenham to realise you don't back in every race. You can't do that in Galway either. You can't fly in and don't. Do, do, do. You just have to be, you know, follow yeah. what you do. If you follow yeah. the game, if not, just have a bit of luck. Uh, but if you follow the game and you follow the, the form, you cannot back in every race or you'll be broke. So you just pick and choose the good ones. You know, it's, you it's have nearly to. 50 races, yeah. Like, look at that first race today, uh, just to let people know about it. Jessica Harrington is having the season of all seasons with her flat horses. 
She's a horse today, the second favourite, going against, obviously, Willie Mullins and Paul Townend. But who's going to get off to a great start? Joseph O'Brien could have a great day today. I think he's got, he's got Linger, the second favourite, in the, or the favourite in the second, at three to one as a standout bet over his flat form. He's great. He's a horse for McManus or the Magna Colours in the last. It's, it's a, Monday night is a nice night. It's, it's a local night, Monday night. You'll have, you'll have 15 to 20,000 up there tonight of wow. local pint drinkers. And it'll be, how's it going, old stock? Long time, we'll see old stock. And it'll be, it, it's nice. Do you yeah. have a specific tip for us? Uh, I've, I've done something already. I think Aidan O'Brien will win with a horse called Inish Free. It's boring, but it's quite simple. I think Joseph will win the, the last race. Aidan O'Brien uh, will win with a horse called Inish Free. And my treble is Willie Mullins and Paul Towner to get off to a flyer. So there's my treble today. So that is authorised art, Inish Free and the risk factor. That's yeah. Hector's treble. It's not, it's not, listen, at the end of the day, it's not too glamorous. It's no Jaguar Claw at 16, but... <laughs> Well, the, well, it probably adds up to 16. It'll add up to 16 if it comes in. You'll be standing there at that bookmaker going, nice one. <laughs> <laughs> Outside Look, of the shenanigans. Looking, yeah. looking for a satchel. <laughs> yeah, see, that's what happens in golf. Black sacks, I always thought was the, <laughs> the phrase. They needed a black sacks to take the money out of the ring. I love it on ladies' day, you know. You know so much money spent on fake tan and so much money spent on hair and so much money spent on beautiful dresses and the women of Ireland looking absolutely blooming. Then you've got these young, skinny, skithering Irish guys with suits on who don't even know how to wear a suit. But I love seeing the women at the end of racing after so much hundreds and hundreds of euro has gone into the dress and the look that there they are with the high heels in the hand and they're on a pair of flip-flops and they're aching as they walk <laughs> as they leave the battleground. <laughs> because that's what it is on Ladies' Day. It's a battleground. <laughs> Um, John, you're going to give us a couple of tips now, but you're going to save most of the tips for a little bit later on because we've got a, a brand new lunchtime show today and tomorrow with um, Paddy Power. We're live at the Goway Races this week on OTBAM with thanks to Paddy Power. You can join us after one o'clock today and tomorrow as we bring you a very special Paddy Power show live from the Paddy Power shop on Prospect Hill with Paddy, Ruby Walsh and of course John Duggan. And we're also going to be launching our Paddy Power Best Punter series this week as Ruby goes up against Joe Walsh, no relation, and we'll be tracking this all week for you here on the show. Um, what do you think, John? I'll just give you two each way. Uh, for, uh, there's a 5.55, a two-mile handicap hurdle, Convara at 12 to 1. I think won at Down Royal on his penultimate run, and he's a lightly raced horse, Convara at 12 to 1. Uh, so he's my each way mm -hmm. first one. And the second each way in a flat race, a 7.05, improving. Uh -huh. Money first into 9 to 1, and he's drawn one. In flat races at Galway, you need to be drawn low. In, in, in shorter races. He'd so a, he'd done a bit of form second last time out, yeah. wasn't he? Nice so arse. Convara, 555, 12 to 1 each way, improving 705 at 9 to 1 each way. And I would agree with Hector that I think definitely risk factor the last horse will win. Um, but yeah, I, I would unless something comes out of the pack, which I don't think so. Yeah, I'd also agree with Hector that you you, you don't want to be uh, back in every race. It's it's a marathon, not a sprint. And Galway can be harder to work out. Galway is more about nuance, say, than Cheltenham. Um, but you do need horses that, you know, you need to look at the market. And there are market moves for certain horses today. There's market moves for authorised art, uh, Hector's horse. Uh, there's a market move for improving the one I've just mentioned there. There's a market move for legal spin, Patrick Mullins in the 740. Mm. Uh, there's a market move for Great Trango also in that race. And then there's a market move, like a little bit of a nibble on Gordon Elliott horse in that last race, Soldiers Hill, mm. 16 to 1. It's a, it's a really... It's a really interesting track because I used to live beside it and jogged it and, and ran it many, many in the afternoon. When you come around the bend in Galway and you, you cannot see the winning post because it's such a climb, it is intensely hard. As you sweep the bend, when your horse is on the bridle at the bend, so many horses don't finish because you cannot literally see the steep hill. It's incredible. And then I hear people in the ring going, oh, that bloody horse, that bloody jockey. And I say, why don't you go out and try and jog the hill or walk it and see what they've got to do. It's, it's incredible. So even when your horse is on the bridle in one of the chases coming over the two uh, fences in the dip, they have to sweep around that hill and it is punishing. It's grueling. Some of them want it. Some of them don't want it. Uh, it's an incredible track. If you had, um, so a lot of people will be watching this and on their way or coming later on in the week, if you would one piece of advice for navigating the festival as opposed to the, the punting, what would that be? Uh, Gaviscon. <laughs> <laughs> Cal Paul. <laughs> Pseudo cream. <laughs> Zoffy racks. <laughs> An ATM card. <laughs> sparkling water. And as many types of painkillers as you need. Sounds like a good week. <laughs> There's nothing worse than standing for the ATM. I've never done a touch wood. I, 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 in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, 
at a race course, man. There's something like it's it's there's something humiliating. Oh God, Jesus! Have to, have to go to the bank. Uh, <laughs> yeah. there's, al there's yeah. always a queue. Well. There's always a yeah. queue for the yeah. ATM. Either they don't come on with enough <laughs> funds to do what they would want to do in there, whether you're drinking or you're punting, but. No, there's always a queue for the ATM. There's nothing worse. It's bad enough at half two in the morning waiting for a snack box. But are you a racing fan? Um, I've done a few stints in Galway. It's probably yeah. my favourite festival. Um, geez, one year with Kyle McInerney, who plays hurling with me, we'd we three nights up here, and I haven't been back <laughs> since. To be honest, that was. And you know what? And you know what? I, the Claret Jug is in on on his world tour. He's here. <laughs> the Claret Jug will be in Galway in right. the middle of all these fine ladies. All oh, right. So Make he's on tour back. as well. I Shay Larry's down on Tuesday, I think. Is he? Okay, because yeah. it was a, an Instagram... I, I heard it because I rang his jug last night. <laughs> <laughs> there was an Instagram post last night saying, hit the reset button. I was like, oh, that must be the end of the tour then. That's it, finished. But no, obviously... Oh, it's he'll be here. He's no, here. Right. The rumour is around town. He's here for two nights. Hector right. is the inside track. There's there no rumour. He knows. Mm. There you go. I said the reset button is one night off. I was in... Where was I years and years ago? I think Steve Staunton. There was a load of Irish, and Irish boys over. I was in a pub with Steve Staunton and a lot, about 10 years ago and he was bursting for the jacks and he couldn't get to the toilet because he was signing autographs and just going... And he went to me, Hector, is there anywhere we can go for another? I said, so I brought him round a side alleyway out of a pub round, and the two of us had a wee in a nice, quiet corner. <laughs> of a street at three o'clock in the morning, it was me and Steve Staunton. It was a classic moment, and then back into the pub. <laughs> That's right up there. That's better than Isn't the satchel of cash. Hector, is there anywhere I can go for a squirt? <laughs> because like, the pub was wedged, and that's what Galway is. It's just wedged. I mean, this hotel turns into, this hotel turns into Ibiza at eight o'clock in the evening. <laughs> so are you, are you staying here for the week? Well, two nights. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, am. <laughs> I am, I am, I am, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Watch yourselves, lads. <laughs> yeah. It's a jungle out there. <laughs>